folks, Reg Borden's just said, make it short, because Jim hasn't eaten for 20 minutes. <laughs> so, if you could just slip Jim a little bit, because, uh, well, once you start talking about boxing, you can go on really for a long time. I know all the lads here, it's, it was an honour and a privilege to play with him. It was an honour and a privilege to know him. Because not only was he a fantastic player, he was a great guy on and off the field. He had certain qualities that you only very occasionally find in thousands of people that you get to know. It's a wonderful book. It's riveting. It took me approximately 24 hours. I, got, I was sent a preview and within 24 hours I'd read it. Um, it's the sort of thing that I couldn't put down. There were a few things I knew, a few things about the Benidorm tour that I guessed, and quite a lot that I had absolutely no idea about, and quite a lot I imagine that could never be published um, without some kind of legal action afterwards. Boxer was so full of life, it was incredible. But the bit that comes out of his book is just how modest and unassuming he always was on and off the field. He thanked so many people for his success. Let's say everybody played this huge part in Boxer's success. And at no stage, really, does he ever acknowledge that, one, he had a pretty awesome talent. Two, he was completely fearless. I mean, a lot of the lads here, these forwards, they owe their good looks to Boxer looking after them on the field. <laughs> and thirdly and finally, like Tom Mitchell, who it's always great to see his picture, he had that certain X factor. Whenever he came in the dressing room, it, the mood altered. He had a kind of charisma about him. He came in, he kind of acknowledged everybody. Some he'd give a playful thump to, some he'd pull the hair, a few he'd abuse, um, he'd wink, but everybody felt part of it. He had a wonderful way of making everybody feel very special in the dressing room before the game started. He had such an excitement about him. Anecdotes, I, I don't really start with them because there are so many. Um, but one that's particular for me, there is a, a picture when we won the Lancashire Cup in the dressing room afterwards and everybody's there drinking and I'm, I think, the only one who's taking his shirt off. Everybody else has still got the, the shirts on. And Boxer said when the cameraman came in with a grin on his face, hey, go like you take your shirt off, you look like an unused sub. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who played in those eras, um, I didn't change my shirt at half time. It was, <laughs> it was still as clean at the end. Um, but despite letting tries in, making errors and that, I got nothing but support from all this lot. And over the last 10 years, you know, I think sometimes we don't realise just how well known this Cumbrian side was throughout the Super League. You know, you have to pinch yourself when you think, we went to St. Helens and won, we went to Witness and won, we went to Warrington and won, we went to Leeds and won. So far, I think we won about five in a row. You know, it's quite an incredible side. And over the last 10 years, I've been taking Super League fans uh, on escorted tours to watch the Catalan Dragons and most of them are of a, an elderly, I'd say 50, that sounds terrible doesn't it really, I know in my age, but more senior citizens, the young people do their own trips but these people like a bit of guidance and whenever a Workington connection comes out it's amazing that some of their eyes glaze over and you know they, they talk with so much delight about Workington and one player in particular. You can guarantee that in every single conversation, one name comes up, and it's Boxer. In sport, when you get known by just one name, whether you're Pelly or Eusebio or Cassius, you know you've been a little bit special. Sometimes it's not always complimentary. We, we won in a game where Boxer got a drop goal at Warrington 1-0. <coughs> drop goals had just become a point, and we won 1-0, and the a Warrington fan said, did you play that day? And I said, well, yeah. I said, what did you think of it? And he said, worst, worst bloody game I've ever seen in my life. He said, but I knew that little bastard had dropped a goal. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. You always had that sort of supreme confidence. And the other team had that kind of feeling. He had respect for everyone. To watch his battles with Reg, who, I mean, Witness was such an awesome side at the time. I think if Witness had not been around, 
the Workington side will go on, on an awful lot more. But to see them, they kicked, they bit, they thumped everything throughout the game. And as soon as the final whistle went, they walked off like long lost brothers. It stopped there and then, and you'd see them perhaps two hours later, still chatting away, still drinking. Many's the time when I've seen the, the coach, team coach driver, and the board try to get these lads on the coach to come home. And they've just said, no, we're not going. And I know sometimes they've stayed, I do believe, once they even stopped to train at St Helens to get some of it home when they stopped out after a county match. And that was just boxer. He'd lived for the minute, he'd lived for the day. It was tragic that his career ended so soon and perhaps that he wasn't able to put more into the coaching side of it because he would have been inspirational. There was never a moment when Boxer was around that you didn't know he was around. He had the X Factor. You don't have to be a tall man, you don't have to be huge to be a giant of the game. The book tells you all about it. We are here today in the company of a giant. Thank you, Boxer. Well done.